Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is gonna be a really fun day. This is the Braxton Creek Bushwhacker 12ROK Radical. What this really is, is a series of videos that we're doing here on this channel of small, super cool trailers. And if you have an interest in that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe because I'm filming here at Lyle Bongard's RV CRC RV Center here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. And this is just one of their small trailers. There's a whole bunch of other ones here as well. And like I said, they give me complete access. So if you want to know more about this that I don't cover in this video, just let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe because this isn't the only one I'll cover, but if you have questions about this unit, I'll come back to it and answer, uh, answer your questions in future videos where we go over this again and again and again until you have a video database of all the information you want to know. Now again, this isn't the only small trailer they sell. It's not the only small trailer on this channel. There's a whole bunch more. I got one just to the left here you'll see in the video. I got one just behind it you'll probably see in the video as well. And we're gonna actually get into those in in-depth reviews in the future. So do me a favor, let these dealers know that you appreciate that they give me access. We're on the side of the highway by choice here, so if it's a little noisy, that's fine. But let these dealers know that you appreciate that they give me access. Give this video a like, watch it for a little bit of length of time so they can see some watch time in this, and then we get to show you more and more videos. So what we're gonna do in this review is give you a complete overview of this unit. We're gonna go outside, we're gonna go inside, we're gonna talk about unique features, we're gonna talk about a lot of things I like, and one little thing I don't love as much, but there's a whole bunch to like about this, and I think it fits for a narrow group of people but it fits really, really well for that narrow group of people. Let's talk about who it's for, what it's all about. Let's do that all right now. So the very first thing I wanna talk about is the size of this. I am wider in wingspan than this vehicle or this trailer is in overall width. And what that means is if you have a camping trailer that you're towing behind whatever vehicle, frontal area is a big deal in wind resistance and in then therefore fuel efficiency. So couple things are gonna make this trailer pretty awesome. It is very much like a teardrop trailer from a frontal area uh, design. And you're gonna see inside the floor plan, same type of thing, a lot like a teardrop, but it's got some extra length. The shape of it from the side in the first view that we showed you makes it look like a traditional travel trailer, but it's really not that tall. This one has the extra accessory roof rack on there, but you're gonna find a lot of, you know, a little bit taller residential garages can actually fit this inside bigger than fitting it inside your garage, it's going to give you less wind resistance than the typical full-size trailer. That does a lot of things for towing. It's gonna to make it super easy to tow this behind a number of vehicles. This is just over 2,000 pounds as equipped. Again, you're gonna load it up a little bit heavier than that. So you don't want a vehicle that just tows 2,000 pounds with something like this. This is not your typical tiny, tiny teardrop, but what it does do is get you back to camping without having to do the RVing. And that's what I think the future of the RV industry is going to. Some of these trailers are gonna give you those conveniences of the RV industry, but they're gonna allow you to go camping. And part of that is gonna make it easy to drive. If you have a huge trailer that has a lot of height to it, when you're passing trucks, it's gonna move around a little bit compared to something like this that's gonna stay rock solid behind your vehicle. So that's one cool thing. The other thing you're gonna notice is it has raised ground clearance. We're gonna talk about the practicalities of that. What you're gonna do with this is yes, you could take it off grid, but you can also take it away from those RVing sites that stack your RVs next to each other all like a little row house and you're gonna get back to the tenting sites but still give you the practicalities of a proper RV. So I love this unit just because the general shape of it and there's one just beside it which doesn't have some of this radical stuff on it but we're gonna talk more and more about what all these extra pieces add to it. So let's start with the wheels. We're gonna look at suspension. We're gonna work our way around top. We're gonna to do a circle around the outside and then we're gonna head inside. And I know that a lot of people kind of get bored by some of the outside stuff. I'm gonna to try to keep it interesting and focus on things that are a little different than some of the other videos are hitting. So let's start down there with those wheels. All right, let's talk wheels and tires. Now, in this class of, you know, non-custom built trailers, a lot of trailers are moving to the, especially these smaller trailers, are moving to these cooler looking wheels. So let's just be really honest here. Part of the reason you go to these with the alloy wheels, the mud terrain type tires, they look cool. That's part of the reason they're on there. But this one gives you hints that maybe it actually is capable. You can see a little bit of a suspension difference there. We're gonna look under the trailer in a second here to show you some other differences there. Now you don't need mud terrain tires other than to keep you on a, you know, if you're a slippery trail left and right, but they do look cool. They're gonna give you some good traction through those areas. And you don't care if you get it splashed up, dirty, muddy, that kind of thing. It's not a big deal. So yes, these are for style, but the axle is a little different. The suspension setup is a little different. So while you're not gonna be go rock 
crawling in your Jeep Wrangler with this behind you, you absolutely can take this down in different areas. And the first time I went to Fundy National Park here in New Brunswick, I came in through the back entrance. I had a Jeep and a tent trailer. Jeep did great. Tent trailer, yeah, it wasn't really made for it. So this is the kind of thing that you can take those dirt roads and explore even if you've got the trailer attached, which makes it pretty cool because it can also help you find really cool campsites both on grid and off grid. So let's take a look at underneath the trailer and show you some of the differences in the suspension just so you can visually see that these aren't just a style package on this trailer. So taking a look underneath this trailer at the axle here, you can really see that red axle. Not only is it sort of stronger and beefier, it also comes up in the middle. Now, I'm, again, I'm not filming with my hand in front of the phone here, so it's a little bit hard to point, but you can see in the center of your screen there, it does come up to give you a little extra ground clearance through the middle there. Uh, you've got the water lines that are tucked nice up and high. Again, the angle I'm filming on makes the water lines look far more exposed than they actually would be. Uh, but you've got that strong axle there that's sort of really well built. It, I can tell you one thing that doesn't show up a camera it is super super beefy so again it can handle a little bit of extra rough road uh, riding than the typical trailer can so I want to point out that the radical package here is the one that gives you the suspension difference here. You can have wheels like this, but not the same suspension package. And that's something worth pointing out. You can get it sort of toned down a little bit with just a more style package, but the radical one here adds functionality. And the reason we're aiming up there is because you also have a whole lot of functionality in this super beefy roof rack up here. So there's steps here, there's a step here, there's a step there. Let's use them right now to climb up. You can just sort of reach up here, grab up there. All of this is sort of feels like bed liner, kind of uh, rougher material type there. You've got lots of rails here. We're gonna show you this in a second, but the point is you can reach this entire roof rack from front to the back to put all your stuff up here. And if you're thinking like me, you're thinking maybe a little uh, rooftop tent. Let's talk about the rooftop tent potential of that right now. So as we head up to this roof rack up here, I just wanna show you the other model here, which we can review in a future video if you like. Again, this one's a little bit more of a style pack. It's still the off-road wheels. And if you were sticking a kayak on top or something like that, you've got lots of roof rails up there to stick it up on. But this is something different altogether. That roof rack is stronger, it's beefier. So let's just climb up there together. We won't even cut it. We'll just sort of show you what it's like to come up here all on your own. Now, first of all, let's go fully wide angle camera. This is gonna skew the view a little bit here, uh, make it look a little shorter. But you can see you've got beefy rails right here, beefy rails right there. All of these, of course, are super strong. They're steel rails. You've got a little bit of a wind deflector in the front there. Uh, we'll show you why it's got a red panel there in a second when we show you the front of the trailer a little bit more. You do have a vent here so what you could do is leave this open for various cargo and you could put a big strong rooftop tent up here now one of the key things the reasons i like rooftop tents let's talk about that right now so a rooftop tent is a really practical way to take a typical teardrop that sleeps too, and this is like a teardrop in that it sleeps too, although it does have a little bit more space, and we'll show you that in a second. But a rooftop tent makes the trailer like this sleep four. And by putting it up here instead of on your vehicle, you gain a lot of practicality because if you wake up in the morning and want to head out and the rooftop tent's on your vehicle, it's just a pain. Whereas if you have it on your trailer, you can set it up, Make sure it's super comfortable for your uh, guests, your kids, whoever you got sleeping up top, and then you can be inside. If it pours rain, they've got a place where they can stay where it pours rain, but you also have a heated, air-conditioned, comfortable, cozy place inside this trailer that you can hang out as well. So let's take a look at that in just a second. All right, before we go inside, let's just cover a few things on this trailer. We talked about that vent up top, and there's that reason for the, the uh, red panel back there. It shows you that radical uh, name right up top that also uh, is on here. I gotta say, the graphics on this look pretty cool in person. This entire trailer is very difficult to show on video in its scale and its cool factor. You see this in person, it's going to draw a crowd. It looks pretty cool. Let's just quickly touch on what we've got on the outside here. Of course, you've got your electric um, uh, uh, riser there. I, cranks, you know, whatever it's called. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. This is the problem with doing videos kind of live like. All right, down here, you can put your battery tray in there. This does have electric trailer brakes on here. So you have the option with the nine uh, or the seven pin wiring to plug that in and have trailer brakes uh, plugged in, which of course connect to the wheels. You got that, that all sorted out here. LED lighting literally everywhere. So you can see little tiny LED marker lights. They light up plenty bright enough to give you a little extra lighting. This is where you have a solar panel option. So you can plug in your solar panels. And what's cool about that is you can set them out uh, where the sun is. So a lot of times, if you're like me, you want to park this a little bit in the shade. Maybe you can use a little less air conditioning, that kind of thing, or you get a cool spot right by the lake, which again, the raised, uh, the raised travel of this, the raised, uh, 
floor plan of this allows you to get it really close up on, you know, where you want it, near the lake, under the woods, whatever you want. You can deal with uneven ground a lot better because you've got ground clearance that means that you're not gonna scrape a rock on the bottom of this. So what you can do here is set those solar panels out a little bit further away and in a better sunspot than you maybe want the trailer. So it's a real nice advantage to have there. You've got your water heater, heater in there. There's a water tank in this. We'll talk about that in a second. This little uh, flip here, I don't know if you can see that. That's just gonna hold the door open. There are two doors to the inside on this. One of them is right here. We'll talk about the windows in there in a second. You can see those steps across there. Super handy to reach the entire roof. Water heater back here, fresh water fill, you've got it right there, typical stuff. There is an outdoor shower here. So some of these small units, you know, they don't have a ton of water, they don't have hot water, that kind of thing. You could shower right here with a shower tent, or even if you just get the right site, you know, maybe kind of hide from things, you know, use a bathing suit, whatever. Rinse yourself off, rinse your dog off. You've got hot and cold water there. City water connection is also right there. And of course, if you're draining your water, there's your low point drains right there. Super simple stuff. We're gonna show you the back here. This is where it's super cool. This is part of the interior, but we're gonna go inside first before we show you the kitchen. This has a bit of a curve to it, so it's hard to show you exactly from this angle, but you can see, over over here, if we come this way here, whoops, kind of went wide angle by accident there. Let's kind of go back there. So you can see a little bit of a curve there. So that gives you just a cool little feature there. That's also gonna be really beneficial when it opens up. You're not gonna have any water that could pool if it sits the wrong way level. No matter where you are, if it's not perfectly level, uh, that'll be fine. Let's go wide angle again. Again, we're skewing the view a little bit here. Got a speaker up top there. I don't know if there's a speaker on the other side. I think there might be. Let's just double check. Ah, there we go, there is a speaker on this side as well. So you've got speakers on both sides for your stereo system there, uh, which of course is Bluetooth stereo, so you can uh, connect whatever you want from your phone. What I love about this Radical one is it also has this uh, uh, awning up here. So again, we can show you that awning in maybe a future video there, but you do have a nice awning. Let's just go away from the wide angle, and you can see that right there. Uh, so that tucks in nice uh, there as well. A couple things I didn't show you on the other side here, I should show you over here, is you have these little LED lights on top of the, the um, doors there, so you've got lighting outside where you want it. Uh, doors are typical locking, um, you know, typical locking RV doors there. Of course, they're shorter in height. And then this is just sort of a vent for your air conditioner. Let's talk about the air conditioner as well. Because you don't have the typical air conditioner on top, you've got full use of that roof rack, and you also have a better wind resistance. A lot of those big air conditioners can really cause a lot of wind issues there. Now you've got full option to put your um, stuff up there. Even if you went with like a Thule or a Yakima like cargo box up there, you've got aerodynamic options to put stuff up there instead of losing your roof to a um, to a air conditioner. The other thing with those air conditioners is they require a 30 amp plug-in to have them work. Some of these air conditioners here, you can just plug in at your house with a regular plug. That's something worth considering there. But now what we're going to do is we're going to hop inside this unit. All right, so we've opened the door here. I did not latch it shut, so that's probably gonna come slamming me. Now, what's cool about this is you don't have a drop-down step, like a little step that comes down. It's already built in, so you've just got that built there. It's nice and strong. What I like about this area here is in these little, um, in these teardroppy style bed type trailers. And again, the inside of this is mostly a bed, but you can see you can modify it to make it chairs and other stuff. But you don't always have a spot to put your shoes. Now you could put them under the floor right there. If it's a nice day though, and you just have like Crocs or something that doesn't matter if it gets a little bit damp, there comes that door. Uh, you could put your shoes out here, put them in a little uh, Tupperware container, something like that, keep your stuff outside. So you do have a big wide area here on top of that big wide tire to put your shoes and not have to put them on the ground or underneath. So let's take a quick look inside now and see what you get sort of as the standard setup. Now I am gonna go wide angle again. This is gonna skew the view a little bit, but it's gonna give you an idea of what's going on. So here you have a deep counter and this is really where this stands out to me compared to your typical teardrop trailer. You've got the bed in here. It's 60 inches wide like a queen bed. It's 50, or 78 inches long like a queen bed. So if you wanna know how much size is in here, go to your queen bed in your house. Other than an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom, this is your queen bed. And in my opinion, it's basically the same as a queen bed. You do have fireplace in here. I think it's kind of silly to have a fireplace in here. However, this is really good for kind of an ambient lighting. And because it's electric heat, uh, you can get some heat out of that with some cool lighting. But electric heat, if you're at a campground, you've already paid for the electricity. You're not paying per kilowatt hour or something like that. So the electricity you've already paid for, and if you need to heat this place, there's no point using your propane furnace, which this also has, which is right over here, or at least that's the venting for it. Propane is something you pay for on your own. Electricity, if you're at a campground, you've already paid for, so you might as well use that to heat your unit, and that's free heat, which is kind of nice once you've already paid for it. We're gonna take a look inside this. We're gonna jump up and take a look at what's inside. We're gonna reconfigure the uh, floor here a little bit to show you what's going on, but let's just show you one area by this door here. You can see that these mattresses are kind of um, 
um, separated but connected here. So they're kind of hinged right there. We're gonna flip this one up like this, around like that. And we're gonna show you that on this side here, you've got a hinge, actually they're both hinged, right? So you've got these, um, these panels here, which are really connected. Now you have a smaller container right here, which right now has uh, some grill components in there, which you can store there. This is basically a two by four, giving you all that space, but the entire underfloor area of the bed has interior storage. So you can just put your shoes in there if you wanted to and keep them inside. And then this whole area is the same sort of thing. I'll show you in a little bit later in the video. That also lifts up and gives you just a little bit of storage. Picture a little bit of a two by four with plywood on either side, storage underneath your bed. So you have a little bit extra hidden storage underneath there but let's climb in and take a look what this is all about now all right so i have the double stacked mattress here let's just take a look at it there that's the double stacked mattress when i fold it up there's the regular mattress and i'm on double stack and i'm sitting up here and you can see i'm six feet tall i've got tons of room to sit in here and lounge comfortably now the other thing is you can move these cushions around any way you want so let's just kind of come over here and uh I have a backrest cushion here. So what you don't see here on this view is I have a really nice cushion behind me, which we'll show you in a second there. But again, I am lounged out six feet tall up against the door there with the wood floor there and it's super comfortable. Although this is a queen size bed, they do a good job of making it comfortable for lounging, whether you want the mattresses down, whether you want them up, and it doesn't feel claustrophobic in here at all. I think that's partly due to the good size windows, which we'll show you in a second. It's also due to the overall height. And because this curls up at the front, like you see, but it does not curl at the back from the inside, which we'll show you in just a second, it gives you a nice square opening. So let's take a look at what I'm pointing at that way, uh, which is uh, what you can't see on camera. We'll flip that around and show you some of the stuff that on that side and talk about how this kind of works and makes it feel kind of cool. Okay, so sitting in the same direction I was just sitting in, I'm now facing, you know, this picture where I was sitting with my feet up against that door there. There's your air conditioner. Now, the nice thing about this air conditioner is kind of like a built-in unit that you can take out and service or take out and replace. Or if you didn't want it at all, you can use that for storage. It's quite easy to remove that if you wanted to. So again, small trailers, you want some flexibility. Your furnace is here. There's a little storage space here, uh, which again, pretty good amount of stuff in there. It's very deep. Again, it's hard to show the depth on camera. I probably should have bought a, a um, probably should have bought a, or brought a tape measure, but you can see very, very deep area there. Speakers up there, plug up there, stereo system up there, which is Bluetooth. You could put a TV in here if you wanted to, just bring your iPad. That's just way smarter. There's another speaker over there. I don't know if we can see it. Let's see if we can get that in there. So yeah, a speaker over there. Again, I'm working with no lighting in here, so it's still fairly bright. Now coming across here, follow the roof line. See how it curves up right there? You've got some of those mounts for the for the uh, roof rack in there. So again, securely mounted through the roof there. Uh, let's actually, before we follow the roof line, let's follow the roof line and the windows. Big windows here that open. Big windows there that open. And the roof line goes square to the back. Now on a traditional teardrop, it would curl down and rob space here, but now, what you've got is a lot of cabinets up here. So you've got your typical fuse panel um, and breaker box right up there. This is the one thing I said I didn't like. That's your water pump. There's no water inside the unit. There's only water on the back side, which is the kitchen. I would like that switch to be on the outside, not the inside, but it is what it is. Maybe there is one on the outside as well. I haven't actually fully checked that. Down here is an access panel for things like your um, water uh, system and that kind of thing. You can get to this from the inside or outside the unit. We talked about the fireplace. And then over here, very easy to operate. Let's just zoom right in there, be a little fuzzy. There's your super easy to operate water heater. You've got a plug up there as well. Um, and then just your uh, detectors down there. So again, plug up there, detectors down there. Now let's take a look at the inside. You know what? I'm just gonna stay with this shot as we go. Let's go wide angle. Oops, I zoomed the wrong way. I'll go wide angle here. All right, in here, decently deep cabinets. Now there's only two there. Now again, if this isn't enough stuff or space for all your stuff while you're living here. Let's just go around the other side. Big windows there, big windows there. You do have a ton of space on the counters there. So what I like to do is just throw my bag or whatever it is up there uh, when I'm camping and I would throw it down here when I'm traveling. This is the backrest that I was looking at. Now they have a cup holder built into that, which is pretty cool. And they're totally free. You can move them around. You can put them up there. You can put them down here if you want them out of the way, in the way. Uh, you could sleep on this bed with them there. They're just really cozy and you have two of them. Again, if you're not using your fireplace, you could even lean them against that side. So you have a lot of flexibility in how to get comfortable and they're firm but comfortable. So like firm enough to support you but soft enough to feel comfortable, which is a really big piece as well. So that's the inside of this trailer. I'm sure there's something that I missed. Uh, maybe I'll just show you the roof vent there. It does have the proper venting there, but that's the inside. 
let's go show you the kitchen area as well. And uh, hopefully you get a sense of what you want. But again, if you have questions, let me know. Stepping outside again, one thing I do want to show you is there is a little handle here to help you get in. Again, it's not a massive step, but it is a bigger step to get in. And same with getting out. And again, because these are typical RV doors, you have the uh, lock of just the handle and you also have the deadbolt down there. So you've got really good locking systems here. And again, having those windows there really gives you the option for some cross ventilation up high. You've got the fan out there uh, in the ceiling, which is that um, fan. That fan can spin and suck the air out of this. In other words, it can fully replace the air in this unit in no time at all. Now, let's take a look at the kitchen area here. Again, we're on the roadside here. I chose to be on the roadside on purpose because I think it's cool that we can show the other units here as well. But we're gonna film this right now. So taking a look at the back of this ca camper, if you've seen teardrop trailers, you're pretty familiar with what you're gonna see inside here. It's the kitchen. Now, this is different than some teardrops because some teardrops, the way they open, they open sort of more on themselves and they only give you a little bit of space. This gives me like, I'm not even at the edge here when I'm standing here. So if it's pouring rain, I can hang out in here. And again, I'm six feet tall. There's a ton of space here. Now this would concern me if I was six foot six. That's a little pin there. I don't know if you can see it. They are little pins that stick down on the handles, but they're lockable handles. I'm well under that and you can easily fit that. What I would do is stick a little pool noodle on that uh, if you're in an area where it's uh, concerning. But here I am, tons of space, weather protected. And again, because this is curved, you never are in the situation where it's gonna pool water if it's level or it's gonna do weird things. It's always gonna drain around the outside and it's gonna drain around the back side. If it's square, it can come off the side, the side, whatever you want. So if it's pouring rain, and the water is gonna drain, it's gonna drain off that side, which means you can walk this side to your door or this side to your door without walking through the stream of water that's coming down. Now you also have the ability to work here on your cook stove. We're gonna pull this all the way out until it latches. This is your cook stove. We saw the sort of top for this uh, there. It's designed to be cooked on on this angle here because it's gonna have some areas there, but you could also cook on it here and you have a sink over here. So the entire time, if it's pouring rain, you can cook in a protected area. What I would do is find a little um, netting type system that clips over this and you can peg it to the ground. There's lots of those uh, cheap netting, the white netting that you could put down, um, not even an accessory. It's just like a, a netting that you hang from a tree. You could clip this over there, clip it down. If it was super mosquito-y, you could make it work in this, no problem. Now let's take you in a little closer and show you what we've got here. So starting with this cook stove griddle type thing, we can sort of show you as it comes in here. You can see it comes out. There we go, we can bring it all the way in. I'm looking at my watch because it's my viewfinder. You've got the on off, the high low, that kind of thing. You've got it in here. It clicks into space there so you can have just the stove out, but we're gonna click it all the way out so the sink is out. So again, the cook stove, the griddle on that is just inside the trailer right now. You can keep it there. And then you have a sink in here as well. So again, just a sink to do the basics, clean your dishes, wash your hands, do your basic stuff, all of it's outside. Now we're gonna spin over here and we're gonna look at the counter, but we're gonna go up. This is a 12 volt fridge. So it opens the wrong way for the camera. It's not super huge, but it gives you enough of what you need to fit what you need. Now, if you were to take a big cooler along as well, you could put the cooler right here. And what's cool about that is if you wanted a cooler that is an electric cooler, you've got a 12 volt plug right there. You've also got a 110 right there. What I would do, and, and again, let's just sort of zoom in here. You can see sort of everything there. What I would do if I were you, I don't drink coffee, but I know people who do. I would use this plug for my coffee maker and have that sit right up here. This is a very grippy counter as well. So let me just go wide angle here. This counter here, as I stand there, maybe I can be in the shot, maybe I can't. This is a very grippy area. Lots of noise from the road. Again, this is my fault. But this could fit a cooler and it could hold it in place while you're traveling. You could take it out, set it on the ground. You could do whatever you want. Uh, something like a Yeti cooler would be amazing with this because again, they seal so well and it keeps cool. So again, if you have enough space in here for your uh, food, and you might actually have a lot because remember, a cooler you need to fill with ice, you lose space. Let's just actually come around this way and we'll show it to you here uh, as we do this. I'll open it up for you again. If you have enough space in there, for everything you need, then you're golden. But if you don't, you've got space for a cooler both in your vehicle and in the trailer here. Now, let's flip up a little higher because you also got cabinets up there. Let's just take a look at them. We'll do the same take here. Cabinets up here, they do not have something to hold them up taller, which I would love, but you do have a very deep space up there. All of your dishes, everything you would need is up there. I think one of the things you're gonna probably want with this trailer is possibly a little step stool. You can get little folding step stools because those uh, cabinets are so deep up there that they may be harder to reach for shorter people. So 
Really great kitchen. The last thing we should show you is what we didn't show you earlier. It's right over here. Let's just zoom into that. This is your access panel. I'm going to quickly take that off here. We had one of these on the inside as well, you can see. Uh, very secure there. And all of your uh, stuff is in there. For instance, your pump and your other stuff. Now, what I would do is, although this is a bit of a fragile area, we're going to kind of come across here. Although that can be a bit more of a fragile area for various things, what I would do is store things like some dish towels in there, uh, just while I'm cooking and that kind of thing. Because you do have some space for soft stuff. You don't want to have damage anything. Maybe I'm talking out of a turn because there is some electrical wires in there. You don't want a lot of water in there. Um, but again, very easy to access. One of the key pieces of a trailer like this is the simplicity of if there is a problem, all the plumbing is connected right there. It's super easy to winterize, it's super easy to deal with, and of course you have a microwave there. One of the keys to a microwave there is by not placing the sink there, you gain more counter space. You would usually put a sink in there, which means you can't have a microwave. Microwaves are super handy to just cook something quick on the go as well. All right, that's your overview of the outside. Let's wrap this one up by talking about who this is really for. Before we fully wrap up, I should point out that the kitchen is lockable with two handles, not just one. So both those T handles are lockable, which means that you can lock up your kitchen, which means you're also bear safe and animal proof, raccoon proof, that kind of thing, uh, to make sure you keep your food outside the unit. And the nice thing about the kitchen on the outside is whatever smells you have from cooking, they stay outside your sleeping area, which means inside here, it's just your cozy cabin, place to hang out, place to lounge. So let's talk about who this unit is for. Now, I think that this this is really, this general concept is really going to catch on. I think there's a market of people that really want to have some of the conveniences of RVing, but they don't want to be stuck into those RV sites that have huge trailers stacked right next to each other, and it's just not camping in nature anymore. This gives you the flexibility of a tent. You've got the ground clearance to go down you know, rough roads. You've got ability to park in rocky areas to line your trailer up for the scenic view and get into those tenting sites. So right away, you're going to be in sites that you can't get to with a regular RV. But you've got the comfort inside. It may not have a dinette inside. It may not have all those, all those kind of things. But if you're the kind of person that just likes to lounge and hang out, this has all the comfort you need. And having this little bit extra space with the longer roof line gives you more space in the kitchen which is really important to just take your stuff, but it also gives you more living space inside and it doesn't feel claustrophobic. There's a huge benefit to having that smaller frontal area, lower in height and narrower in width to have the aerodynamics tucked behind your vehicle. That means you're gonna get better fuel mileage. It's gonna be easier to tow when you just pull into gas stations. You haven't got a huge long trailer to tow and you've got everything you need in a bigger trailer into this smaller trailer that lets you have a better camping experience than you would in some of those RV sites. Now, what this is not, this is not a super, super, super lightweight trailer. At around 2,100 pounds or so, empty, you're gonna load it up a little bit bigger. This is something you could tow behind a whole bunch of vehicles, but to me, I would want around a 3,500 pound towing capacity with this because that means you basically won't really feel it. You've got the flexibility. Although this would pair excellently with something like a Jeep Wrangler, a pickup truck, a regular small SUV also fits really well here. And again, your SUV doesn't have to be as off-roady as this. Keep in mind, cars are built to take all kinds of bumps. You can head down a road that's maybe made that your car can handle, but the typical weaker trailer can't handle, this thing's gonna always be able to handle it. It looks super cool. Where else I think this is really good is whether you are older or younger. If you're just a couple that's camping, this is perfect. But if you don't wanna have to sell this trailer when maybe when you have a couple kids or take a couple kids, add on to it, expand it with a super cool rooftop tent, and you've got something that you keep for a long, long, long time. I still think this will fit in some garages. I don't know if it'll fit in mine, but some of those little bit taller garages, I still think it'll fit even with this roof rack. I think this radical one is the way to go if you can spring for it, uh, because the extra suspension really does add extra strength, and this roof rack is really, really good compared to a typical roof rack that's just gonna fit things like kayaks or lighter weight stuff. So, is this unit right for you? I don't know, let me know what you think of it. And again, remember to subscribe to this channel. I have full access to this vehicle. If I didn't answer something about it, I can come back and do another video to make sure I get those answers. We have other models here that I'm gonna be filming. So subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in this kind of small trailer and do me a favor, hit the like. If you wanna see these guys, you wanna see this uh, dealer, wanna see this unit in person, the dealer here has the link in the description of this video. You can come check it out in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They are absolutely awesome people here. Super, super friendly, super helpful, super knowledgeable. They will take care of you. So that's it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one.